ah, Market Garden, are you still a bridge too far? Cold Steel 1796 Light Cavalry Saber. Did the review several months ago. Had some problems with it. Some of which was about how the sword fit me, and some of it was about how it was made. And since then I've been doing, well, work on it here and there. What have I managed to accomplish? What's gotten better and what hasn't? And specifically, what did I do? Well, what was bad about it to begin with? Let's start with the weight. Two pounds, three ounces. That doesn't sound like a lot until you consider point of balance. Two pounds, three ounces would be at the top end in historical versions of what would be considered a enlisted man's arsenal sword, not a more finely made officer's sword. So overbuilt, hefty, designed to take abuse. So weight and length, not not entirely out of spec, but point of balance absolutely was. As far as I can tell from what I've researched on historical versions, point of balance is usually five or six inches off the guard. Point of balance on this beast was eight and a half. That made it exceptionally, exceptionally tip heavy and therefore unwieldy. I could not maneuver this thing with any nimbleness whatsoever. So going from cuts to parries and back again, or even in the cuts, I was over swinging. It was putting a lot of torque on my wrist. Worse, there was so much mass in this part of the blade above the fullers that I was having an issue I wasn't having with other swords that I have that are curved. And that was this. When I was using it more vertically, whether we're talking about a vertical or downward angular cut or rising cut, no problem. Moving laterally into any kind of parry, though, or any type of more horizontal cut, the weight here, combined with that curve, would wrench the tip downward, put a lot of torque on my injured wrist, and make it really difficult for me to keep this blade in line. So in horizontal cutting, I was getting a lot of S shapes. It just wasn't working for me and felt awful. The other thing about it that I mentioned in the previous videos is that the shaping of the blade I've had some waviness in other reproductions, but this one was straight up lumpy. I mean, really lumpy. Like a little kid had made the sword by hand out of clay. That lumpy. Yeah, it was, it was pretty horrible. So, spent a long time, days and days and days and days, going back to it over and over again on my big old 4x36 sander with a lot of different you know grits from medium to really fine reshaping everything. And the parts I couldn't reshape, well, the fuller. I couldn't really get a power tool in there, so I got a rounded block, went after it with sandpaper. It took a lot of the lumps off. Still a little bit lumpy, but it's a whole lot better than it was. What are the other results? Well, a better edge plane. Wasn't terribly sharp to begin with. I still, I kept the lower third blunt but as you go up the blade, you get down to less than 20 degrees in edge angle. It's really sharp. And yes, if I can make it cut, it cuts really, really well. Talk about that in a minute. I did also reshape the tip a little bit. Took about maybe three quarters of an inch off of it in making it just a shape that appealed to me and the way I tend to use swords a little bit more. Put more of a swedge on the back so I've got a back edge on it. Even the curvature of the spine wasn't wasn't very even so i spent some time making that curve well more evenly curved took a significant amount of steel off especially up here now not enough that it's given it undue flex okay it flexes a little bit more than it used to and you'll see it is mostly towards the tip but it's certainly not floppy nor does it get floppy in the cut but result two pounds, three ounces down to just a shave under two pounds. Point of balance, eight and a half inches is it has at least come down to seven. So better, still feels blade heavy, still what I would consider not very maneuverable for me. I do tend to overswing. I do have a hard time recovering from cut to parry and vice versa. But again, maybe that's just me. 
start that conversation in the comments, your experiences with sabers or sabers like this, your preferences, um, what works for you. But I really don't feel comfortable with the thought of needing to defend myself with this as an offensive and defensive weapon. I just, I just don't feel like I can transition quickly enough to get from parry to cut. And I certainly can't do anything resembling a quick, effective wrist cut with it. Also, the extreme curvature for me, you know, I've had this challenge with other swords with a lot of curve, but this one's got even more than that. When I'm cutting, the improvements I've made, yes, this, this cuts now really, really, really impressively if I can get the cut right. What I tend to be doing is I'm used to cutting with what would be the Mono Uchiana Katana. So this is what I'm aiming for when I'm hitting a target. Now, because of the extreme curve, I'm still instinctually kind of expecting the blade to be here, not here. So I'm hitting the target later. And if I'm drawing through it, what's happening is if I'm using, I'm specifically using wide targets to check my edge alignment, usually like, you know, 18 inch to two feet of cardboard, I find that my sword is coming out of it. As I start to cut, as I cut through and pull, I'm actually pulling the sword out of the target before I'm all the way through it unless I get, well, nearly a foot closer and hit the target starting about right here, dead set in the middle of the blade. Then, yes, I can get through one of those really thick targets and still have the blade in the target when I'm done. So that's something, again, I feel, yeah, if I have to be that close to a target to get an effective cut on it and not have that much backward angle on what I'm hitting the thing with, I just, ah. Uh, I don't feel confident with it. But like I said, it's it's a lot sharper, it's a lot handier, and it's not over flexing. So I think we're we're on course, but I just I don't know if I'm ever gonna be comfortable with this. Now, you may or may not notice that there's still some scars on the blade. I have been hand sanding it and polishing it, but I haven't like taken it down to a fine polish because every time I think I've gotten it where I want it. Yeah, I find myself dragging it back out onto the sanders, going after it again. So you may get yet another update on this. One other thing. Fitting it out hasn't really affected the scabbard fit. It's still quite nice, but I mentioned there were two plastic inserts inside. Yeah, one of them came loose and came out, and I discovered that it's, it's just a strip of plastic that's stuck in there with one of those little... I don't know what they're officially called, but those those little sticky foam squares that you use to hang pictures with, yeah, that's what's holding the inside of the scabbard together. So that's it's a little discouraging. But I stuck it back in, and hopefully it'll stay put. Otherwise, let's get that conversation going in the comments. Your experience with swords like this, any tips or tricks you might have for me. Love talking to you guys. And like I said, you may see this sword again, even a little bit different. But until then, thanks for watching. See you next time.